Hey, it's almost Christmas and been doing some wrapping of presents. Uh, I have to wrap this one, which happens to be the shape of a box, also called a rectangular prism. Now, I'm going to wrap it in a kind of a bit of a peculiar way. I'm going to use the least amount of paper that I can to wrap this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace it on here first and create what is called a net for this thing. So let's put this over here so I can weigh that down. And we're going to do this. We're going to trace this. Now I realize that most people would not wrap a present this way, but I want to use this to talk about surface area. I'm going to rotate it like this. And trace the next side, that side right there. This thing has six sides which I am hoping to have all drawn on here, and hopefully I planned this well enough that this will work. And then I need this one other side, and I think I need to do it up at the top here. So if we flip this back like that, and I flip it back up for this one side, this might just work here. All right, now that's four of the sides, but I also need these two long skinny sides. So if I tip it sideways like this, that gives me those two long skinny sides. And then back the other way. Now I, when I'm doing this, I'm going to end up with something that looks like that. Now I'm going to cut it out, and then we're going to use it to wrap the present. I realize again, this is not how most people wrap presents because they just overlap the paper. But I want to do it this way and figure out how much paper is the least amount of paper I need to cover that thing. So let me cut it out now. I will try and do it in as fast as I can. All right, are you ready? Here it goes. Alright, so there's my net. It's a bit curled up here, but there's my six sides. I'm going to see about wrapping it here. We have two rectangles that are like this side right here, that side, right? The two big rectangles. We have two rectangles that are like that little side, and we have two rectangles that are like that. How do you figure out how much area that is? Well, first let's wrap it to make sure that I've got this right here. So, this is number one, not very pretty, and number two, this is not the normal way to do it, plus because I, I wasted a bunch of pieces anyways. But mathematically, that's the least amount of paper I could use to cover that. That is the surface area of that prism. How can we calculate how much that is? Well, we need to know a couple things here. We need to know three things. We need to know each of these measurements. All you need to know is these three measurements. The length of that thing which is, by the looks of it here, 28 centimeters. We need to know the width of this thing here. I guess if we're doing it this way, we'll call that the width, which is 14 centimeters. And we need to know the height of the thing, which is seven centimeters. So how can we figure it out? We're gonna do that right now. Calculate the surface area of this thing, the area of all that paper flattened out. All right. So let's look at how we can calculate that surface area here from our measurements. We had the length of that thing was 28 centimeters. We had the width of it was 14 centimeters. And we had the height was seven centimeters. So we have a net here, which is basically the wrapping paper all unfolded. There's six sides to the thing, and there's three pairs of sides that we have. All right, we have the, the two long skinny sides and one on the other side. We have the two short little sides on the ends. We'll call those the ends. And then we have the top and the bottom. All right, we're going to calculate each of those things. 
to find this surface area, you have this rectangle here, the big one, the top, okay, top, bottom. We have the the way the way this is facing here. We'll call this the front, and this the back, and then we'll we got our two sides here. All right, now when we figure this out, top and the bottom are the same, so we can just work out the top times it by two, or the bottom and times it by two. The front and back are the same, so we can work that out, work out the front times it by two, and then work out one of the sides and times it by two. And that way we'll have all this area here, all of this, okay, all that area. Right, that's what we're gonna work out. So let's go down below here and work this out. If I'm gonna work out this surface area, I'm gonna start with, let's just call it A for area. We're gonna add the three things as I said here. We want, we'll say the area of the top, but we'll times it by two. And we'll take the area of the front and times that by two. And then take the area of one of the sides and times that by two. To work out each of these areas here, we need to put the dimensions in. Dimensions of the top, okay, the top's the big one. The top is the one that's 14 by 28. So let's put that in there. We have 14 centimeters times 28 centimeters. And the front, the front is, uh, the one here, let's get rid of that and that, oops, got rid of my M's. The front here, this, okay, also this on here, that's the one that's seven times 28. So let's put it in our formula here. Seven centimeters times 28 centimeters. And then the third one there, area of the side, it's the remaining pair of dimensions. Okay, the ones that we haven't used together yet. If we're looking at the side, the side's a small one, it's gonna be the smallest two. This side right here, it's this side over here, right? It's the two short dimensions, seven times 14. So let's put those in here. Seven centimeters times 14 centimeters. I'm gonna work out each of these areas separately and do one step at a time here. You could put it all onto a calculator all at once, work it out if you want. So we have two, 14 times 28. Uh, if you don't know that it is 392, well, 14 times 28, let me just check. 392, 392. Now this is gonna be centimeters squared because it's an area, but also you know that if you multiply centimeters and centimeters, you get centimeters squared. I like to put the units when I'm doing the calculation to keep track of everything. 7 times 28, just going to be half of that. You can go to your calculator again, where you can realize that it's going to be 196 centimeters squared again, because it's an area. And then this is actually going to be half of that again. 98 centimeters squared. I'm going to keep going here, doing it step by step, just to keep track of what I'm doing here, each of the areas separately. So this first one, 2 times 392 is actually 784. Again, go to your calculator if, if uh, you want to check that. And the area of that front and back together, 2 times this, is going to be 392. And the area of that, the two sides, is going to be 196. If we add that all together, let's go to the calculator for this, just to make sure. We have 784 plus, oops, plus 392 plus 196. At 1372, that's your area. That's the 1392 centimeters squared. When you add centimeters squared, centimeters squared, centimeters squared, when you add areas, you still have area. You don't suddenly have, you know, centimeters cubed or to the sixth or something ridiculous like that. That's the area, all right? 1,392 centimeters squared. That's the minimum area. Remember that when I wrapped the present, I made the edges just touch. There was no overlap at all, all right? But that's an example of 
how you can find the surface area of a rectangular prism just by taking the three different types of sides and working out the area of each one and then doubling each of them because you got two of each of them, right? And that's surface area of a rectangular prism.